Hello, here we are back in Illustrator and I want to teach you some things that will make the pen tool easier and faster for you to use, notably some keyboard shortcuts and also a few little tricks. The, um, I've opened a new file in Illustrator and if you'd like to play along with me I suggest you do the same. Doesn't This is a letter size file but it doesn't much matter how big it is. And I have a little picture, you can work over any picture you like, but I have one in your class resources called Red Swedish Dala Horse and I'm going to simply search for that here and use the place command to place it in my file. There it is. A bunch of versions of this. going to place that in there. Remember you're using the place command as opposed to the open command and this allows me to put this horse in here as a layer in my file. There he goes, cute little fellow. Okay, over that layer I'm going to draw with the pen tool and I'm going to make a new layer just as we did in our Baroque rendering. So this will be very very similar to what you're doing. I'm going to double click the horse layer here so that I get this layer options window to open and I'm going to click the box that asks um, about dimming images. It will automatically come up 50% and I am going to dim that image a little bit because although I want to see the horse I'd also like to see my drawing nice and clear on top of it. Okay so now I'm going to take the pen tool and draw this horse. I chose it because it's a very very simple thing to draw but it has both some nice curves and some straight lines so we should be able to use both kinds of pen tool anchors on this. I'm gonna select the pen tool. I'm gonna make sure that I have a black stroke and no fill. As you'll remember there are two kinds of pen tool anchor points. The first one I get simply by clicking and not dragging but releasing my mouse. Then I'm going to go up here and click again. These are angle anchor points and the lines that come out of them have no curve whatsoever. Now the top of this ear has a little bit of a curve but I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm just going to make it a pointy ear for now and I can fine tune it later. I'm going to go down the side of my little dollar horse here and I'm going to click and drag a little bit now getting handles to come out of my anchor points. This shows that the lines coming out of those anchor points are Bezier curves and they will be controlled by the handles if they're not quite right. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so that you can see that that last one I drew isn't quite right but I can go back and fix it. I'm going to just click here because I want a nice straight line. I'm going to go here and click and drag because I want some curved lines. Now this is a rather tedious way of laying these lines down. I can end my pen tool line if I'm tired of, of doing all this clicking and dragging simply by hitting P on the keyboard to get that piece of mozzarella cheese to uh, break off on its own. And now I'm going to go to the pencil tool underneath the shaper tool. There it is. And I'm going to go back to that line. Now with my pencil tool I'm going to click on this line to let Illustrator know I'd like to continue it and then click and drag to continue my line around the horse. I'm not paying very close attention to accuracy here. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can. <laughs> there we go. When I get back to the original point I should see that little circle that shows me that I am completing a shape. Notice that although I began that shape with the pen tool I was able to complete it with the pencil tool. So you can change horses in midstream as it were. However when I go to edit this line and I do want to edit it because I'd like it to be a lot more accurate than it is. I'm going to choose the pen tool. The pen tool has a great property that if you select one of the selection tools first immediately before you choose the pen tool like that, you 
can toggle back and forth using the command key if you're on a Mac or the control key if you're on a PC. I'm pressing with one finger of my left hand on the command key to get the pen tool to alternate between the pen tool and this white selection tool so I don't have to go back there every time I want to switch between them. And here's why that's important. In order to move these anchor points, you must first select them with the white selection tool. So I click on it to select it, click and release, and then I click on it again to drag it where I want. Click on it to select it, click and release, and then click on it again to drag it exactly where I want. And you can see, of course, that this is a very powerful way of editing your piece right off the bat. There are some places where I'd like to do more, though, than just move my anchor points, right? I'd like to make them more accurate. I might like to add an anchor point here or there. I might like to subtract an anchor point that's in my way. So when you hover over this line with its anchor points, you'll notice that Illustrator tells you when you've found an anchor point. It shows up as a little box and the word anchor is uh, highlighted in uh, purple. It's a little hard to see that. When you're over a path, it just tells you there's a path, but when you get to an anchor point, boom, it lights it up, right? And you'll notice also that my cursor changes on the pen tool. When I was here on the path, I had a plus sign Illustrator's telling me that I can add an anchor point there if I want. But when I get to an anchor point, I get a minus sign. Illustrator's telling me that I can eliminate that anchor point if I want. Let's eliminate that one. And you notice that straightens out the path a little bit, maybe more than I want. Um, let's move this one by toggling the command key in my case, or the control key possibly in your case, clicking once to select it and then clicking and dragging it up a little closer to the contour that I want. The other thing that I can do once I've added an anchor point, subtracted an anchor point, or moved my curve is that I can alter the curves on the anchor points. So for example, let's go, let's zoom into this area a little bit here. I'm going to command plus to zoom into the nose of the horse. And I'm going to command toggle to um, the selection tool in order to select one of these anchor points. Let's select this one because I'd like to really fix that curve. I'll select it. And you notice when I select it that its handles come out. And I can alter that curve by dragging on the handle. The longer I make the handle, the more extreme the curve is, and of course I can also change the direction of the curve by the direction of the handle. I'm going to try to make this curve a little bit flatter though because I want that, um, that line, that path, to stick a little bit closer to the horse's nose. I'm going to toggle away from the selection tool and try to just eliminate that anchor point. Oh yeah, I'm better off without it. I'm going to change the curve on this one a little because I've given him a pointier nose than I want. So command to toggle. I've already got the handle, so I use that selection tool now to pull that. Whoops, I also, I also altered this one a bit to pull those curves in and make them a little bit uh, straighter, not quite so angular as they were before. Now these anchor points need to be moved, right? So toggle to the selection tool, click on it once to select, click on it again to move it, toggle once, whoops, toggle to the selection tool, click and move. This anchor point, let's move this one too so we get it just right. This anchor point here, I kind of wish it wasn't a smooth curve. I think I could use an angle anchor point there just fine. There's an ankle <laughs> an anchor point conversion tool underneath the stack of pen tools. You see that, it's that little V-shaped thing at the bottom there. But rather than go back to the toolbar every time we need it, because we're going to need it a lot, it's much more convenient to toggle to it. And you can toggle to it using the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key, I think it is, on a Windows. So I'm going to click this thing 
and its handles disappear and it becomes angular. Now it's not right up in the corner the way I want it, so I'm going to toggle to the direct selection tool, click it once to select it, click and drag to move it. Right Now this one I'm going to move in just a little bit, then we're going to slide down to this one. I'm going to toggle to direct selection, move it just a little bit. I don't like the way this follows the curve, so I'm going to grab this handle and adjust that curve just a little bit. And then the same with part of the curve, of course, is controlled from the other side. So I'm going to adjust that just a little bit. And you can see how easy it is to edit these things. I can get this a little closer to the corner by clicking and dragging. I can make this point, which is now an angled anchor point, I can convert it to a smooth anchor point by uh, clicking my my Alt or Option button and simply clicking on that and dragging out the handles that I want. This handle, obviously. I'm going to go back to my Direct Selection tool. doesn't need to be that big, but this handle, it's nice to have that little bit of a curve there. Okay, so this is how you're going to edit your pen lines. You can also get very good at laying down your points and your paths, your anchor points and your paths, exactly where you want them and with exactly the correct Bezier curve to each one. However, I think a combination of the two techniques is the most efficient. I would suggest, especially if you have access to a graphics tablet, that you consider using the pencil tool right here to lay down your initial paths. It feels more like normal drawing. And uh, the learning curve is not nearly so steep as making the original drawing with the pen. But then I really do recommend that for editing, you go back to the pen tool. Make sure that you first select your direct selection tool. You don't want the black one, you want the white one. Because you need to be able to drill down into your path and select those anchor points, and that's exactly what the direct selection tool is for. Then choose the pen tool. There's all these wonderful tools hidden under it, the add anchor point tool, the delete anchor point tool, and the convert anchor point tool, but as you now know, you can get all of those without ever going back to the toolbar, right? The add anchor point tool you get anytime you're over a path, the subtract anchor point tool you get anytime you're over an anchor point, and the convert anchor point tool you can toggle to with your Alt or Option button from the pen tool itself. Remember that you will need your direct selection tool in order to select an anchor point, in order to manipulate the handles of an anchor point, and in order to move it. So I hope this helps as you're working on the uh, pen tool layers, obviously the detail layers can be extremely uh, time-consuming, and I think anything that saves you time and makes your work more efficient with the pen tool is likely to help you master and love this very, very powerful, infinitely editable drawing tool. Have fun!